This is going to be titled, Was It Really an Angel? Look at Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. It says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, than that ye have re received, let him be accursed. Now just about every cult and false religion and satanic rock singer or rapper claims to be visited by an angel or some type of good benevolent spirit. Sometimes, rarely, they'll claim an evil spirit. But for the most part, they think it is a good angel who is protecting them and helping them and giving them prosperity. And many rock singers speak of spirits. I recently heard a song by the band 21 Pilots in their song Jumpsuit. Uh, the man sings the words, Spirits in my room, friend or foe, felt it in my youth, I feel it when I'm old. Uh, I don't know the man's spiritual state. I don't know how he feels about spirits. I don't know what he believes about Jesus Christ. I'm just saying you hear a lot of spiritual talk in music. A lot of talk about talking to spirits. And in the band's song, OD to Sleep, the lead singer says the lyrics, I swear I heard demons yelling. So once again, he quite often talks about hearing some type of spirit. And the band Imagine Dragons talks about their demons hiding in their eyes. Jay-Z said he gets possessed by the spirits when he writes the music. The filthy singer Kesha claims to have sex with a ghost. And you can look that up. Uh, the rapper Kendrick Lamar claims he was visited by a silhouette of Tupac telling him to keep doing what he's doing and if you don't know who Tupac is he's been dead since like 1996 the singer Adele claims to live in a haunted mansion the pop singer Ariana Grande chose to discuss a particular experience that took place in Kansas at the at some type of cemetery uh, rumored to be one of the eight earthly portals into hell and Grande recalls smelling sulfur in the car on the way there, which she says is the sign of a demon. And I, I, I agree with that. I mean, I've heard tons of preachers who say, who talk about uh, being uh, attacked by unclean spirits and they smell that sulfur. But she's seen three distinct faces in the background of a photo she took to try and see the ominous feeling she'd picked up on. She claims to have later seen a big black mass and red demonic flashes. I don't doubt these things one bit. All these people with a mass amount of influence seem to have a lot of run-ins with spirits. And these spirits are lying to them. Just like the supposed angel who gave revelation to false prophets. You have all these people on YouTube and they say, I was visited by an angel in my bed. I was visited by Jesus Christ and he told me to tell you such and such, yet such and such isn't even in the Bible. And it just just look at Galatians 1, 8 and 9 again. It says, But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, than that ye have received, let him be accursed. So if an angel 
from heaven comes to you and gives you a different gospel than what Paul gave, then you know this is a fallen angel. Maybe they are angels that deliver de these deceptive messages to people, but the Bible talks about other angels. There's m more angels than just Michael and Gabriel. In Psalm 78, 49, it says, He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. So there are evil angels, unclean spirits, lying spirits. And 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen through 15 says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. And it could be an angel from heaven that has left their first estate. That is, if they're teaching a false gospel, we know it's a unclean spirit or an angel that's left their first estate, but it's not an angel of God because, I mean, they're accursed for teaching a false gospel. So if an angel comes and gives a false gospel or tells you something contrary to this book, then they are from the devil, not from the Lord. And every person claims they saw an angel with blonde hair and blue eyes. Uh, every grandma has angels all over the house, and the angels are female with wings, sometimes baby angels. But in the Bible, when an angel shows up, they, they are male without wings. All the pictures you see don't give you a correct uh, view of angels. And it seems like angels in the Bible just look like a regular man. And that is why Hebrews 13, 2 says you can entertain them unawares. But a lot of old-timers claim to have helped an angel or a person that they thought was an angel that the Lord sent to test them, maybe. They saw a man walking on the road. He looked like he didn't have nothing to eat. They gave him something to eat. And they say, well, the Lord was testing me. And gave me the opportunity to do that to one of his angels and i don't know if that's true or not maybe it is but <clears throat> if it was an angel it wouldn't go against the bible's description of an angel if it was female with wings it obviously wasn't an angel but that describes the female devils in zechariah chapter 5 but was it really an angel everybody and their brother claims to have talked to an angel or know somebody's talked to an angel or some type of spirit but let's look at some religions that claim they received some type of divine revelations from an angel you know a lot of cults start from a man claiming to talk to a spirit for example islam in islam the false prophet uh, muhammad is said to have received his revelation for the Koran by the angel Gabriel, which is a lie. And whoever this angel or spirit was is accursed, according to what Paul says in Galatians 1, 8 through 9. Now I'm going to tell you some blasphemous things the Quran says about the Lord Jesus Christ. For example, it says the similitude of Jesus before Allah is as that of Adam. He created him from dust then said to him, Be, and he was. And that's false doctrine. If that statement came from an angel, then it was an evil angel because Jesus was not a created being. He was not made from dust. He's always been here. And there was never a time when the Father looked down and, and said, Be, to the Son. The Son's always been and always will be. The book of Revelation says he's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. The book says he, that I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Jesus has always been and always will be. But back in Galatians, in Galatians 1, 6 through 7, it says, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another 
but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. So if you deny that Jesus is God, then you pervert the gospel of Christ because he wouldn't have resurrected. He would not have resurrected if he wasn't God. The resurrection is part of the gospel. And that little verse right there in the in the Quran or Quran um, that perverts the gospel. They claim that Jesus is not God. And next, it denies the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Look at this verse. It says that they said in boast, We killed Christ, Jesus, the Son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. But they killed him not, nor crucified him. But so it was made to appear to them, and those who differ therein are full of doubts with no certain knowledge but only conjecture to follow. For of a surety they killed him not. So as you can see, this Quran is a satanic, inspired perversion, and anyone who teaches it is just a liar and a heretic and is going to go to hell if they don't come to Jesus Christ. They're going to burn in hell, and hell's going to be hot for teaching all these blasphemous things about the Son of God. And you get an eerie feeling when reading these verses. You know why? Because it's inspired by devils. So many lies about the Lord Jesus Christ. If Islam came from a revelation of an angel, whatever angel it was, Gabriel, whoever, then it was an evil angel. I'm not saying I doubt that they got it from a spirit. But I know it wasn't the Holy Spirit or... An angel that's right with God. It wasn't an elect angel. It was a, a angel that left their first estate. Psalm seventy-eight forty-nine says he cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. So there's evil angels, or there's lying spirits. In Second Chronicles eighteen twenty-two. It says, Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil against thee. So Islam, obviously inspired by unclean spirits. And next, Mormonism. There's a man named Joseph Smith that founded Mormonism or had a big part in what it is. And he claims to have been visited by the angel Moroni. Now Mormons add to the word of God by claiming other books of scripture. And Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 2 says, You shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Now Mormonism has four written books of scripture. They have the book of Mormon, Another testament of Jesus Christ which claims to be a record of God's dealing with the inhabitants of ancient America from 2000 B.C. to 400 A.D. They have the Doctrine and Covenants, a collection of revelations and inspired declarations given for the establishment and regulation of the Church of Jesus Christ in the last days. They have the Pearl of Great Price, a selection of revelations, translations, and writings of Joseph Smith and then finally they have the King James version of the Bible and claim to believe the Bible to be the Word of God as far as it is translated correctly we also believe the Book of Mormon to be the Word of God they say so they believe all these to be the Word of God but they're wrong it's just the King James that's the Word of God all that other stuff is the Word of man and Mormons believe the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are three separate gods. For the most part, that's what Mormons believe, which is false doctrine. Uh, Malachi 2.10 says, Have we not all one Father? Hath not one God created us? There's one God. Mark 12.32 And the scribe said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth. For there is one God, and there is none other but He. So even 
they believe there's one God. The scribe believe there's one God. Romans 3.30 says, Seeing it is one God, which shall justify the circumcision by faith, and uncircumcision through faith. 1 Corinthians 8, 5, and 6. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many, but to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Ephesians 4, 6, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. 1 Timothy 2, 5, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. James 2, 19, thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well, the devils also believe and tremble. So the devils and unclean spirits know that there is one God. And they would like to make you think that there is more than one was the angel who talked to Joseph Smith really an angel? If it was, could it have been a fallen angel? Or could it have been an unclean spirit? You gotta watch out thinking that everyone who claims to talk to a spirit, you gotta watch out thinking that they talk to a good spirit. 1 John 5, 7 says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. You have the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, one God, one and three and three and one. But the Mormon teaching says all the Father's children, including humans, possess the same potential to become gods like the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. Since they are of the same species, they say, and every human spirit once existed as a divine intelligence before becoming the spirit children of the Father. So more false doctrine. But the Mormon cult has many doctrines of devils. Was Moroni an angel sent from God or an unclean spirit? I'd watch out about a spirit who says that if you do good here, then one day you're going to be a god and you're going to have your own universe and have people worshiping you. That's satanic because there's always just going to be one God. You're a son of God when you get saved, but you're never going to be God. You're never, you're never going to be worthy to receive worship. Now next, Jehovah's Witnesses. Jehovah's Witnesses believe God is the creator and supreme being. But Witnesses reject the Trinity or the Godhead and they consider it to be unscriptural. They view God as the Father, an invisible spirit person separate from the Son, Jesus Christ. But 1 John 2, 22 through 23 says, Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is an antichrist. He is antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. And these Jehovah's Witnesses are false teachers who deny the deity of Jesus Christ. So the kingdom hall should really be called kingdom hell. Charles Russell was hooked up with familiar spirits, not the Holy Spirit, not clean spirits. Aleister Crowley claimed to talk to spirits and is one of the most influential people for wicked men today. Everybody and their grandma has been so-called visited by some spirit. I don't doubt they saw something, but what they saw wasn't from God, especially if it contradicts the Bible. I talked to a woman the other day about salvation, and she said the spirits tell us that when they died, they found out it didn't matter if they did wrong on this earth, so they just laughed and just thought it was crazy that they worried about whether they did wrong or right on this earth. They said that there is no such thing as good or evil. That's stupid. That's not in the Bible. 
And it's not even good common sense. The Bible says in Galatians 6, 7 through 8, it says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh, so of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. If it's okay to do evil, then why is it called evil? If it's okay to do evil, then why does a lost man most times feel guilt after he does it? You can't trust a spirit. You need a more sure word of prophecy. I don't really like saying, I don't like saying the Lord told me to do this and the Lord told me to do that and the Lord came to me and told me this. I really don't have enough confidence in myself to know that the Lord, that that was really the Lord telling me this or that or not unless I get it from the Bible. That's how, the God, that's how God speaks to us, is through the Word of God. He's not coming to me at night and, and telling me to do stuff. Now, you know what I mean. You can read the Bible and the Lord talks to you that way. But in the sense of, well, God told me to go do this and God told me to go tell you that, things like that, you don't know if that's God telling you that or not. But you have a more sure word of prophecy. But then you have people that have these dream guides that come to them and then they, they make a video on YouTube telling you this bunch of bull that never comes to pass. And Jeremiah twenty three thirty two says, Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. But this is how cults get started. The devil comes to a man, lies to him, he gathers a group of people under this lie, and the devil gives him power. It becomes a huge movement. And the false prophet gets glory on earth in exchange for his soul, and in exchange for leading other souls to the lake of fire, just like the devil wanted to do with Jesus. He wanted Jesus to fall down and worship him and he told him he would give him all these things if he'd fall down and worship him. But you have to be careful listening to what people say they supposedly got from God. It has to come from the Bible. It's the final authority and there are no contradictions or errors in the Bible. And if I find one, I know I'm the one in error because the Bible is always right. So how do you know you've been visited by an unclean spirit? If it told you to do something contrary to the Bible, you know it's an unclean spirit. Don't you know the Bible says that Satan transforms himself into an angel of light? You got to watch all this stuff about talking to spirits, all these Ouija boards and things people do. But if you're not saved and you've made it this far, the most important thing is knowing that you're saved and going to heaven. And Paul tells us the gospel in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 3 through 4. He says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So Jesus Christ died. He died by shedding his blood. He died for your sins. He was buried and resurrected. And the Bible says in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It says in Acts 16, 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. The Bible says, <clears throat> There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He called himself the door. He called himself the water of life. He's the bread of life. He's the only way to get eternal life. So all you have to do is come to Jesus Christ knowing that you're a guilty sinner and believe the gospel. Put your faith and trust in what he did on the cross and his shed blood and on him to be your payment for your sin debt. Quit relying on your own works. 
quit thinking you can pay it off yourself. The payment is the Lord Jesus Christ. He paid it all. So just come to him before it's too late.